Hello, my name is Adam Novak and today we're going to make our castle chess piece. There's no background image needed so we can start by adding a circle. We'll then go to top view by pushing 7 on the numpad and then we can centralise the viewport by pushing shift C. By pushing tab we'll enter edit mode and then pushing B using box select we'll select all the vertices we don't require then delete them. So that we've only got 5 vertices left. And then by pushing full stop, we're going to start using cursor manipulation. We'll re-enter the front view, then extrude these vertices up one unit, being sure to hold control so it increments in solid amounts. The next thing we'll do is to extrude and immediately right click so we deselect it. We can then push S to scale. This will start scaling it to its cursor location. If we push Shift Z next, we can exclude the Z axes from scaling. By doing this, we can continue to create our object from one viewport. At the moment, we are only seeing a part of our chess piece because we are going to use a modifier. I want to continue to mark out the front portion of our chess piece and I'll show you some advantages of using this modifier. You will notice it is quite similar to our chess pawn piece we've made earlier. Though you can't use the same techniques for this chess castle since it has things such as the parapets which will be added. It is also the same technique which I use to make stuff like custom gears, which we can go through in future episodes. I now just simply close the top face so that I can show you how this array works. We'll start off by adding an empty plane axis. This will be the object which we're going to use to array around. We'll rotate this object 45 degrees exactly by pushing R, then on the keyboard manually pushing in 45. And then we're going to add our modifier. And as I said, this is an array modifier. We'll then turn off the default setting of relative offset and turn on object offset. Then using an eyedropper, we'll select our plane axis, which we've added. Since our object occupies an arc of 45 degrees and our plane axis is rotated at 45 degrees, all we have to do is increase the count of this modifier until it completes its circle. Eight being 360 degrees, because eight times 45 equals 360. We can now complete our object and create some cool things like the parapets really easily without having to do it each time, extruding it up on a Z axis. And as you can see, it automatically is applied for every one of our objects around the array. By doing this, when we add stuff such as windows, it will be applied for each of our objects as it arrays around the center, the cursor. If for some reason your cursor is not in its center position, select the object and push Shift S and then put cursor to selection. This will put the cursor to the object's selected location. Now if we have a look at the object after we put a modifier on it, such as the subsurface modifier, you can see that there's lines between the arrayed objects because the vertices themselves are overlapping and are doubled up. What we've got to do on this modifier, the array modifier, is to click the merge and the first and last. This will merge the vertices that are duplicated on top of each other after it's arrayed. And now we're going to do the same things we've done to our last objects and add seams or extra ring segments until we're happy with the way the object actually looks. And as you can see, quite quickly it starts to come to life. Continue doing the same thing to your object as we've done in the previous episodes by adding rig segments or increasing the sharpness of the edges. One way to speed up this process is to turn on face select mode so we can select multiple edges at a time. We can also push control and plus to select all adjacent edges so we can quickly add an edge crease. Or we can use edge select and we can sharpen edges by selecting multiple vertices at a time. I will use face select mode again to quickly and easily sharpen the edges of this window here. I then just spend the next 30 seconds or so adding a little bit more detail to this castle chess piece. Feel free to make your own personal changes as you see fit. I hope you understand and appreciate the power of using this modifier. There's going to be many occasions in the future where you're going to use this same course of designing. And if you did want to 3D print this object, just simply pull down the bottom edges until the overhanging angles are less than 45 degrees so you can 3D print this without using any support material. And as always, thank you for watching. You can support us at EY2K by sharing this video, subscribing or viewing our Patreon page where you might find some cool things such as the ability to have your chess pieces 3D printed.